Okay, continuing with the uh, the back page of the quiz review, 5.1 to 5.3. Number six, identify the domain and range of each. Okay, we know the natural log uh, functions are always going to have a vertical asymptote. And um, if we just think about transformations here, the graph is going to shift to the right by three halves and up five. So we simply uh, know that our vertical asymptote will be at three halves. And anything to the right of three halves will be our domain. So from three halves to infinity. And then range for your natural log functions or any log functions will always be all real numbers, negative to positive infinity. Uh, for number seven, 3x plus 17, uh, this is going to um, going to shift to the left, uh, negative 17 over 3. So we know our vertical asymptote will be a negative 17 over 3, and our domain uh, will be from negative 17 over 3 to positive infinity. And I made a mistake here. This is the 3 halves is at the asymptote, so we should have parentheses here and not a bracket. Uh, same thing with number 7, parentheses at negative 17 over 3. Okay. And again, uh, range is all real numbers. Expand each logarithm. So to expand, we want to use uh, power, quotient, and product property uh, to try and um, initially, uh, when you expand logarithm, you are um, taking uh, a one log statement and uh, rewriting it um, as uh, separate log uh, expressions. So ln of a, b, c cubed, we can write, think of it as go through product property. So ln of a plus ln of b plus ln of c cubed. And finally, uh, the, the exponent can come down to the front as 3 ln of c. Okay. Number 9, condensing each expression. We want to write this as a single logarithm. So I'm going to rewrite this as 1 half ln of u, 1 half ln of v, 1 half ln of w. And then all these um, coefficients, we can bring them up as exponents. And finally, uh, we can use uh, the product property to uh, condense this all to be uh, ln of u times v times w, all to the 1 half. Okay. All right, number 10, differentiate each expression with respect to x. Um, here we have ln of um, fourth root of 2x cubed over 3x squared minus 4. Um, if you see a, a natural log problem, then you want to take advantage of that and um, expand as much as you can uh, to make life easier for you when you're ready to find the derivative. So um, I'm going to rewrite this as a parentheses to the 1 fourth. Let's bring down the 1 fourth, and we're going to keep expanding uh, by using the quotient property ln of a over b is equal to ln of a minus ln of b, and I'm going to distribute the 1 fourth through. And all this time, we haven't found the derivative yet, so all we're doing is we're just rewriting this, this in a different form uh, to make our derivative process a little bit easier. So now we're ready for, for the derivative. We've expanded um, um, as much as we can. We, technically, we could expand this some more, but this is easy enough for us to find the derivative where we can just leave it in this form. So. The derivative rule for ln of u is u prime over u. So 2x cubed becomes 6x squared, and 2x cubed stays. And we don't want to lose that coefficient, the 1 fourth. 3x squared minus 4, this is our uh, u value for the second uh, expression. So 3x squared minus 4 becomes 6x over 3x squared minus 4, u prime over u, with the 1 fourth coefficient attached. And then we can clean this up a little bit more. 3 over 4x minus 3x over 2, 3x squared minus 4. Okay, number 11 is much the same way. Um, we can bring uh, expand by bringing the 5 down in front using quotient property, ln of a minus ln of b, um, and distributing the 5 through. And then we do u prime over u, u prime over u to find the derivative. And then we clean up um, just a little bit more. Number 12, it says use log differentiation to differentiate each function with respect to x. So uh, with log differentiation, we're going to be introducing logs into a problem that initially does not have it. So we're going to uh, take the natural log of both sides. So you only do log differentiation if you don't see logs in the problem to begin with. Okay, if there's already logs in the problem, you're not going to um, uh, add an additional log into the problem. So here, we have no logs in the problem, so we're going to take a natural log of both sides, 
ln of y equals ln of x squared plus 1 to the 1 third. We're going to try and expand this as much as we can. The only thing that we can do is that exponent can come down to the front as 1 third ln of x squared plus 1. So now, at this point, we're ready to find the derivative. ln of y, we have to go through um, implicit differentiation. So ln of y, we make it um, 1 over y times dy dx. And this here, we can go through um, the rule for natural log. ln of u becomes u prime over u. And then, to solve for dy dx, we can move the y over to the right side. And then once we do that, replace y back in terms of x, of the original equation. 13, same thing. We have an equation that has no logs to begin with, but we're asked to use log differentiation. Take the natural log of both sides, and we're going to use uh, uh, product property to bring the 2x down in front. Um, but at this time yet, we have not yet found the derivative, but now we're ready to do that, now that our uh, variable exponent has been brought down. Uh, the left side here, we go through implicit differentiation, just like number 12. So ln of y becomes 1 over y times dy dx. Here, 2x times ln of x, these are two separate functions, two separate expressions that are being multiplied together. So you have to go through product rule, f prime g plus fg prime. So 2x becomes 2, ln of x stays. And then g, which is 2x times, um, sorry, f times g prime, so the derivative for, derivative for ln of x is 1 over x. Uh, clean, this as much as, clean this up as much as we can. Uh, then we bring the y over to the right side and then replace y with the original equation, x to the 2x times 2 ln of x plus 2. Okay, 14, we're going to evaluate uh, the, uh, the derivative of an inverse function at a point. So with 14, um, we're given the function and a is equal to 5. We're asked to find the uh, derivative of f inverse at 5. So we're starting here. Now, if I want to find f inverse, uh, the derivative of f inverse of 5, we know that the order pair that we're talking about is going to be f inverse of 5 at a particular y value. Now, we don't know what this y value is to begin with, um, but we do know that um, if f and f inverse are, in, you know, they're inverses of each other. So they're going to have corresponding points that are shared. They're going to have um, order pairs that are um, um, switched with one another. So if 5 is the x value of the inverse, then 5 must be the y value of the original function. Right? That's just the nature of a function and its inverse. So I know that the y value, if I can find out, if I know the y value of f of x is 5, I can find out the x value. So I can... I'm going to look at my original equation, replace 5 in for y, and then I'm going to just solve for x. So uh, subtract 5 from both sides. And here we can simply see that the only x value that will work um, where I can plug in and get a result of 0 is x equals 0. So I know that f of 0 equals 5, which means that f inverse of 5 is equal to 0. Right? Order pairs will always be switched between them. And if I can find f prime of 0, then I can use that slope to determine the slope at um, uh, at the inverse curve. So f prime of zero to find f prime of zero, we first find f prime of x. F prime of x, so 15x to the fourth plus.